Alright, we are going live. Oh, wow. Hello, good morning and welcome to the 20th episode of V Spire Lab Facebook Live Interview Series. Today with us, we have the country manager of NGAC, Mun Yi, who has a different name that she'll be sharing later. <laughs> a different person, alter ego actually. She's a superhero as well. She saved a few lives. And we'll be talking about brewing the perfect creative company. Can do a Try on. Try on. <laughs> okay. And many people say there's nothing called perfection, but we aspire to reach perfection. So we at Vspire Lab aspire to inspire your startup journey as well as equip you with the necessary knowledge to succeed. Okay, without further ado, let's welcome Mani to give a brief description of herself and her company. Hi, good morning guys. Thanks for tuning in this morning on a Saturday. Uh, to start with, uh, my name is Man Yi. Uh, a lot of you know me as Absidy on MGAC. I am MGAC's current country manager. And some brief background, I am actually not a mass comm student despite a popular belief. I studied psychology back in university. Wow. Yes, it was a good compromise with my Asian parents. I can't be a doctor, so psychology <laughs> was close enough. <laughs> yeah. okay. And uh, life has taken me, uh, thankfully, through a lot of journeys. Mm -hmm. I have, this isn't my first job. I started doing sales because that was easy, okay. made a lot of money. Yeah. And then I did events management. Before that, I wanted to be a writer. And it was really through writing, I feel that was the part where I got discovered by SGAG, our Singapore counterpart, and then we set up MGAG. Wow, so you shrink. <laughs> I wanted to be a shrink. <laughs> okay, yes, alright. I wanted you to tell me about your childhood and what's wrong. Yeah. You, know, you, you have what's that uh, where uh, the Joker made Haley Quinn like him. What? What? Stockholm uh, syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you, you, did you uh, think uh, fantasize something about that? Uh? No. Well, I, I like the idea that somebody sits in a chair. Uh -huh. You know, I, I charge you by the hour just to talk. Wow. So. I should think about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Pro racing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you started a lot of things. Yes. So from psychology to sales. So probably you use a lot of like. NLP and stuff like that and just to increase your sales but yeah, yeah, what made you leave your job and like go you, your passion is writing as yes, well yes. so what made you like leave and keep moving forward well I think uh, when I first started writing I, I wanted to be the next JK Rowling the, the next wow. big hit right uh -huh. so um, I didn't make a lot of money but I was hoping that hunger and suffering would feel that, uh, that that dream right but I, I realized that my passion didn't quite uh, pay the bills. Unfortunately, yeah, they didn't put food bills. on the table, petrol uh -huh. in the car. So I kept doing it, right? I still do, did it. And mm. then there was this piece that I wrote for, um, I was traveling from Singapore to Sydney. Uh -huh. And there was this piece where there was a lady sitting behind me and her, her feet smelled bad. Okay. So I wrote, a, I wrote a piece called the, the Anus of Satan. And uh, I, I don't know if I think South Park had a chance to show that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I I wrote that piece and I submitted it to SGAG as like wow. a, okay. a, a long piece, a creative uh -huh. piece. And from there, it was really um, the founders, kind of were kind enough to go like, "Wow, you actually write like this. Why don't you come on board and and work with us?" Uh -huh. and, and that's how really the idea of working in MGAG and running the company came about. Is it's really true, right? So, so were you like the first hiree for yes. MGAC? Yeah, because MGAC was, uh, it, did ex it existed before, uh -huh. but it's, it's really more of, um, they need someone to run the place. Right, right. right so. I'm so glad yeah. <laughs> I happen to be Malaysian and yeah. in the right place at the right time. So, yeah, that's so how it like, If you think about like how 9GAC came about yes, from yes. 4chan and Reddit posts, so it was just memes yes. and people uploading. Yes. But there was no back then. There was no video content, nothing like that. How did y'all start to think that? Oh, probably we can do this, do that. So I think when uh, MGAC has been around since twenty fifteen, uh -huh. like it was always run by Singaporeans. So uh -huh. uh, Singaporeans and us were very similar, but actually uh -huh. we were very different. You know, some yeah. are up, but not the same kind uh -huh. of thing. So uh, there was they they they'll ask us questions such as why. Why do Malaysians laugh at traffic jam? Uh, why is there a pothole? Why you guys always laugh at potholes? Because they don't <laughs> have that in Singapore. <laughs> we just used to it. <laughs> What's so funny about all these things? Uh, so they realize that there is a need for a local page, a page that creates hyper uh, Okay, read comments le. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The comments said like everything is all about M C D, 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 M C D. Let's go from Monica Bass. I want to see M C D. Yeah, so, so that's essentially Monica. Okay. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Amango da Zola. What the hell is that? 
means mom I'm, I'm successful <laughs> you're on tv mom on tv wow who is that so oh, pretty hi fcd <laughs> holy shit who is this your classmate that eh? <laughs> one of them i guess they know how so like what's passenger 15a oh, so this passenger 15a was the piece i was telling you about the anus of satan so uh, that was my seat number 15a okay wow so passenger 15a yeah. all right so so now on your on your passage you have now reached mgag so you're like the only person how do yeah. you like build the company from that so um when given in terms of background right uh-huh. i have never run a company i've always worked alone and being uh-huh. a freelance writer is a huge because you're literally your own boss right you tell uh-huh. yourself when to wake up in the morning when right, to go to work right. and, uh-huh. and now there's this task which um I, i swear the learning curve was like what one of the founders said it was a golf stick it was like this and Ooh. they just spiked <laughs> it's a golf stick it's like hey buddy um, uh-huh. there's this company uh, uh-huh. we are going to support you mentally and, and okay. financially and mm-hmm. mentally mostly uh-huh. but you know we're going to build this company together uh, right. in, in MGAC so first uh-huh. we have to source for a space all right, right? Yeah. because uh, we can't work from coffee oh, bean uh, or starbucks yeah. you know they, they, they you can't really do conc- something out yeah, there need to be a concrete space and mm-hmm. i think the challenge is looking for for talents yeah. right people to because this is not exactly a, your typical company in uh-huh. with hiring accountants or yeah that. like how do you explain yourself <laughs> So Still, like you go to a company <laughs> secretary and then you're like mm, I want to build a company I'm registering a company how yeah. do you ex- so the registration was the easier the easier bit but uh-huh. every time I try to put out a job ad uh-huh. people think it's a joke right uh-huh. hi big names for a living <laughs> <laughs> how do you communicate communicate that across as a as a real job uh-huh. right? uh, what are the skills required you need to be able to know what's viral content you right. need to be localized uh-huh. So I remember my very first hire. The interview process was very awkward. Like, uh-huh. hi, what do you do? So he's a engineer by by mm-hmm. training, and but he loves to create content. He loves to make memes. And uh-huh. I'm like, so join me. We're gonna go take over the world together. And I'm so glad he's still with me today. Okay, right? Okay. That he took the plunge. And then mm-hmm. when people begin to see that, wow, this is a legitimate company, and you can actually work here and get paid. And uh-huh. Then people were more into it. Then we get the resumes in. But the first, I would say, the first three four months was quite a challenge. Yeah. Why was it so getting customers? Getting or? customers as well because the page was still very small when we first mm-hmm. started. It was about eighty thousand mm-hmm. likes, and likes were a big thing, right? All yes, the companies look at definitely. likes, and people didn't know who we were because uh-huh. I mean we weren't really posting very regularly. Mm-hmm. But then slowly, I think getting the traction, consistency, I think is the hardest thing to achieve. Because right? like if you say that like, MGEX is one thing, GEX Malaysia is another thing. Yes, there's so many so competing many, companies. Yeah, so we have to carve out that niche, and at the same time, we didn't really know who we were going to be. We mm-hmm. had no characters. Absolutely mm. didn't exist. Mm. We didn't have a video team. Um, the, we had a huge office, but there were no people. Right? Wow! So, uh, it was building our identity, yeah. asking ourselves, what yeah. are we good at? Who we want to be? Uh-huh. And um, slowly, slowly, the team grew, and then now. Did you like most companies have like a roadmap, and they know where they're going to be? Like, I want to <laughs> do this. I want to. I want to IPO. I want to cash out in five years. What did MGAC think when they were like your founding days? I think when when we first started, there were some days where. Um, You ask yourself what you want to achieve. You can set goals. In six months, I want to achieve X amount of likes, or I want to make X amount of money. But uh, rather, I wanted to build a brand that people related to. I want people to come back, and I wanted to create characters. At the same time, I don't want us to be influencers. Uh-huh. It, it, it seemed like quite contradicting. Uh-huh. I I don't want to be someone where people come to MGAT because of a particular face, but okay. I want there to be faces. In They want to be faces. Yeah. Okay. So I think what sets us apart really is that instead of having um, yeah. a pretty girl, mm-hmm. we create a very generic. Character, so uh-huh. I mean, the pretty girl is irreplaceable. <laughs> in fact, uh, my goal is to create replaceable characters. Yes. Yeah. So yes. rather, so the reason why absolutely a lot of people ask us on mm. A B C D E, right, mm. is because I wanted a very generic person. Uh, so how more generic than a string of alphabets? But how did you come up with the name absolutely like Cassidy? There's a singer and all that. Yeah. Uh, someone said that this a comedian in Malaysia actually did this job, but I've never heard of it. Uh-huh. I wanted to be Apple. Because apple, apple is a very generic uh, fruit. <laughs> Lots of Siamese people call themselves right? apple, and a, a very honky thing or uh, a Chinese thing. But then I thought uh, apple is a bit too common, so why mm. don't we go with absolutely? It means uh-huh. nothing, and uh-huh. at the same time, it sounded very unique. Right? Okay, so it just t- stuck. <laughs> Monica is like, uh, no wait, Tata is like, why you no interview me? <laughs> is it because I'm not country manager? <laughs> <laughs> crazy <la. laughs> is everyone crazy like this in your yeah. company yes for sure it's I a prerequisite i think 
uh, the saltness or the gila level is very uh. hard to measure but I think everyone in the company mm. are able to laugh at themselves we laugh at yourself first yeah, right yeah. nobody can make fun of you or True. put you down if you laugh at yourself first right if you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. before you can call me ugly I say yeah. I'm ugly then you're like oh that, that's it, my trump card and I can't you, <laughs> you know in 8 Mile Eminem yes. before his uh, counterpart dissed him he dissed himself yes I think that is the same right. uh, sort of um, mindset so uh. all of us are nuts and you have to be Okay, right. so, so talking about being crazy, okay, right? Yes. If I'm coming to a job interview under yes, you, yes. I kind of like force myself not to be crazy. Right. Don't be stupid, don't lose this job. Right. So how am I going to show my craziness to you? <laughs> so ah, they are hiring guys. Yeah, like, they're hiring they're, actually. Uh, job your resume is at jobs at mgag.my. It's really MGAC, important. MGAC at dot jobs at mgag.my. Jobs at mgag.my. Yeah. Okay. So I think when you come into an interview, the, mm. the first thing you do is you dress up and uh-huh. you're, you're proper. You right, 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 talk right. slowly. Uh-huh. Um, you, you show me your certificates. Uh-huh. Uh, what I'll normally tell the people is yeah. like, I, I don't want to look at this. I know yeah. <laughs> I'm a psychologist. So I'm not using this. Push off the resume of uh-huh. your table and I'll ask you, tell me something that I do not know. Already, uh-huh. you know, tell me a story. I think being a good storyteller is yeah. a, a good place to start. You don't have to be funny. Like a lot of people mm. think that you have to be funny. Uh, I'm not looking for clowns. Uh-huh. We are not exactly a uh, joke page. We are content creators. Right. So, right. You know, to ask you, tell me about the you know, the happiest moment of your life. Uh-huh. Very generic. Okay. Yet, uh, casual enough so you can talk about it. I want to see how you tell stories. Okay. Yeah, so this is something that uh, back then stories were just books. Now you can tell stories in lots of ways. So I know like one of these things that you do is like uh, a series of pictures yes, yes. to say a story. Who drafts these things? Who comes up with the right... You have this electric eel and stuff like that. Who comes up with meme, fits which what? So I think we have... Uh, we know it's trending. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say that we are at this point where we are creating trends yet. Uh-huh. Because I guess in the Western uh, worlds, they are uh-huh. a little bit faster. Uh-huh. They pick up and drop things faster than us. So we are right. kind of lagging. Like uh-huh. We are the dial-ups of the okay. world in terms of jokes and humor. Uh-huh. But it's alright because we take what the, the, the Westerners are doing, we adapt it to the local, okay. something that you relate. So the electric eel is literally something that we didn't create. It. Okay. So we have copywriters, we have... Uh, we don't call it copy- copywriters, call it content strategists. Contran- right? Content strategists. Yeah. Uh, but it's, that's a job title you can actually tell your pra- parents, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very like oh, like I mean, technically, I always tell the people in the office, like you know, if you are an office boy, you tell people you're a liaison officer, uh-huh. right? <laughs> but te- technically, you're just an office boy, yeah. right? So, uh, what I really get people to do is um, uh-huh. take whatever that's trending right now mm-hmm. and then adapt it, and everybody creates content together. So the, so the job is very, it's not bound. Like you can be anything you want to be. Really. So you should be aware of what's yes. trending yes. right now. Yes. Let's say. How do you pick what's trending? There's like shit load of stuff happening. I think that's when the filtration is very important because mm-hmm. you only have one pair of eyes and so many hours. Uh-huh. So every day someone's talking about something new. Every day someone is like, oh, you know, let's do this and uh-huh. uh, let's talk about this. And then in, in a week's time, it's, it's lame or lame. It's not right, right, cool. Right, yeah. right, right. So I think it's really up to the team to de- determine, okay, uh-huh. you know what? This is, we can work with this. We, we realize we cannot cover everything. Uh-huh. We really put out like maybe five pieces of content a day and that's a lot. Wow. Yeah, for a team a that, ideally the team that runs this, the uh-huh. everyday memes, there's uh-huh. only, there are only two guys doing it. Two so. guys doing like five content every day. Yes. So is there like no no zone like I sh- I'm not going into that like politics no like what do you stay away from? Yeah. There's always this appeal of you know what sells we, mm-hmm. we know that sex sells politics sells right. religion sells because yeah. it creates uh, dissonance it creates yes. uh, people want to know what you're talking about exactly and people want to argue they want to defend yes. their points so we definitely see the engagement spike every More time we show something a little uh-huh. bit. We touch politics a little bit, or we mm. touch a little bit of religion, but yeah. um, the MGAT mission is to make every Malaysian state a better one. So before we do something, we ask ourselves, imagine after a long day at work, you come to my page and you're scrolling yeah. and you yeah. see people fighting about petrol, see people uh, fighting about religion, and you're just going to be like, wow. It just goes somewhere else. Yeah, and like, we wow. don't really want that. There uh-huh. are enough news portals covering this, mm. and you can argue and banter them, right, but for us right, it's more, right. come to our page, as you are like, sitting in the bathroom, like you know, ah, I just need something. Uh, Speaking about bathroom, there's this one guy here asked if he can wash toilet at MGAC. Oh, <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we do everything, right? So being able to wash toilet is a prerequisite. So yeah, you know, drop in a resume and we'll get in touch. <laughs> Talking about resume, I never get Sylvester says he dropped a resume but you haven't replied. Oh, so... so don't worry <laughs> Sylvester, you, you, your time will come. <laughs> Uh, we get this question a lot. Yeah. Um, 
I guess, or oh, it sounds so harsh, but if you're really good, we would have called. Ah, <laughs> uh, <burn. laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, we do receive hundreds and hundreds of resumes, uh, and there's, mm. like we said, so lean, and there's so little of us in the office that uh, we it, it will take some time for us to go through it. Right. And, uh, a tip if you want your resume to stand out, forget about the grades and everything. Show me something that other people are not doing, and that mm. would be a very good Impress uh, them. Yeah. Deliver them some cookies or something. <laughs> And then say, I'm here for a job interview. <laughs> that will work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like, very, no, I'm not answering that. Uh, it's like, someone is asking where you work from. I'm not, we are not going to answer that. <laughs> Already, lots of you guys stalked her. Yes. As soon as they shared on the Facebook page, you guys just stalked her and started adding her on Facebook and everything. So we're not going to reveal those information. Uh, okay. So coming back here. Yeah. So, oops, shit, my iPad fell. <laughs> All right. After starting, right? Why I like I stalked your LinkedIn profile. So sorry. No, <laughs> it was information collection. <laughs> so y'all said y'all target eighteen to thirty-five year olds. Yes. Why is that? Um, I think eighteen to thirty-five year olds, especially mm-hmm. urban, uh, it doesn't matter race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they they do have spending power. They don't okay. have a whole lot of it, you know. So right, we're not talking right. about brands that are premium or luxurious, uh-huh. right? Uh, in this age range, probably you won't buy a Mercedes. You won't not buy yet, a first uh, house. Yeah, but the I think the fast moving goods, right? Mm-hmm. You're talking about FMCG or yes. FMB. Uh-huh. That's where we come in because these people have money to spend, right? right? Whether their first job or their mm-hmm. parents' money, yeah. uh, and we work with these brands to help sell their products. Uh-huh. So I think this is a they're not a niche group. They're a mm-hmm. huge group. Uh-huh. That people are, I think, really brands are looking at that. Wow, we need to sell to these people. Mm. Right? They don't have the. I think it's a volume thing. Right? It's a volume. One Mass volume market volume. product. Exactly. exactly. Not like a Padinia coach or something yes, like that. Exactly, exactly. So if they wanted to come to you, would would you accept them? A luxury brand. I ah, yeah. mm. Mark Mark by Mark Jacob by Mark <laughs> Jacob by Mark Jacob. I think I would try, uh-huh. but uh, we do get people like property. Uh-huh. Clients, so they want to sell a house. Uh-huh. And when they ask me questions like, Mani, after mm. I put an ad on your platform, <laughs> how many houses do I sell? Yeah. So if I were to say hundreds and thousands, you would run out of houses, uh-huh. I wouldn't have to work anymore. Right, right? Right, right, so right, 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 we always right. tell people that mm. when it comes to brand, they, they care about the purchasing part, mm-hmm. the, 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 the swipe of the car, the uh-huh. exchange of cash. Right, but uh-huh. the, the sale process began long before. Right. Yes, exposure, yeah, exposure, education. Exactly. So yeah. I since started working in MG, I realized that actually a lot of services I never knew about. That the fact mm. that you can buy groceries online, for example, uh, despite being oh, like twenty ish, like you know, I should uh, be trendy, but actually I didn't know these things. Right. So if you are a brand that mm. are tr- struggling to get the exposure yeah. and you're targeting any the thirty four years, so uh, we I think. Hey, your, your friends are dis- like bullying me. Why? It's like host. Who is your favorite MG character? <laughs> You're like, hey, like, like say host, who's your favorite and get character? No one, ah. <laughs> hey, someone actually read, yeah, Maka Ijao. <laughs> so he drew all this. <laughs> really like, and they're like, why is there no gym in there? Oh, no gym. Okay, la, no, la, we ran out of time. La. <laughs> Next time I'll draw more. Jul- uh, all right. So, okay, you talked about your company, your mm. stuff, and like your hiring process. What do you think MGAC will be doing in like next year or like because like four years ago none of this existed like you wouldn't have known that you want to be someone like this <laughs> yes. like you said your parents were asked they still don't know how to describe yes, your job yes. so you're an actor or uh, advertising <laughs> yeah. so like in four years like many jobs would have gone missing new jobs would have come yeah. so what do you think MGAC will be doing then? I think um, <laughs> as long as we we remember mm. I think content is never going to go out of style uh-huh. right as long as we continue to evolve based on the, the demand uh-huh. and we continue to evolve based on what people want I think mm. we'll always be relevant maybe we the stay way relevant the media, yes. maybe we'll end up creating uh, content in virtual reality for example possible like it is as mm. long as technology I mean technology is amazing mm. like you can't do this four years ago I yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody will know how to you know, uh-huh. live stream or anything so I think in 2018 MGX is going to we're gonna do more, obviously create more content, uh-huh. a bit more fun stuff, and uh-huh. we're gonna try to do more offline things. Offline. So, yeah, so allowing you guys to stalk oh. us in face and like but a face to face. Is it like dangerous, <laughs> man? So what we're gonna do is more of we realize that our fans are uh-huh. they wanna meet us. Uh-huh. Um, and it's beyond this fame thing, you know. I think being popular it's nice, but mm-hmm. actually we make we don't make money from being, being popular is not nice. <laughs> No. <laughs> I mean, some people do do, do yeah. pursue that, but uh-huh. what we want to try to do uh, moving forward is to sort of give back to the community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> we are not supposed to answer personal questions. <laughs> okay, one one not so personal. Sure. Uh, are you usually funnier than the guys you date? <laughs> um, no, actually, I'm really shy in person. Uh, uh, I think there is this pressure that guys have to make me laugh, but it, there, it's not necessary. <laughs> oh, no, Andrew is not my boyfriend. It's not. Yeah, so. So y'all got still got chance. <laughs> no. No, uh, Andrew not being a d- boyfriend doesn't mean you don't have anyone else. <laughs> I mean, you can try. Uh, I guess this, just because it's a goalkeeper doesn't mean you cannot score, right? <laughs> 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 uh, that's the point of the game, right? Yes, exactly. The like, chase, <laughs> everything. Yeah. But if I can't score, can I pass it to someone else? <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's a 12 man team. <laughs> 11 ah. Uh. Stop man. Yeah, okay. Shy in person joke. Okay. Okay, enough questions. For a while, for a while. All right. So, you told about your com- uh, your mass market product. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. How is the community community accepting you guys like uh, um I think it, we have to be very realistic where in Malaysia there is yeah. uh, racial segregation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we don't want to talk about it. We always You know, sweep it under the carpet, but it's very it's true. There. It's just right? there. It is. It's very sad that um, that we preach the one Malaysia mm-hmm. notion quite a bit, but it's actually very difficult to create content that everybody uh, loves. Right. Right. When you uh-huh. do something that's too Chinese, then people do feel left out, and mm. our company. I'll just probably stop following you. <laughs> I know, and uh. and nobody creates content for the Indians, for example, right? And it's always. It, yeah, it's so sad, you know, and uh, the. You just got used to it. <laughs> They love you with <laughs> us, the Chinese. So wait, I, wait, wait. I hate the whole racial thing, right? Uh-huh. You know, I try to always tell the guys like, we are Malaysian, so mm-hmm. talk about Malaysian things. Don't only talk about uh-huh. Chinese things or mm-hmm. Malay things. So in our subs, we try to put um, Malay influence. That's why right. when I try to hire. An, an hey guys, she's actually looking for an Indian guy who can speak and understand and sing in. Indian languages, Just everything, yeah. So if you can make roti canai, that's even better. Like the whole Shazam, right? It, it, it's that's racist. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that <laughs> you can edit this oh, out. Shit. Right? <laughs> it's live. Forever. Okay. <laughs> All right, come back. Slip, but um, we we really want this variety. Much more than having like it's not a token person. It's uh, much more than hitting the racial quota. It's more of um, we see things very differently. Right. You grew up in a very different environment mm-hmm. than I did, mm-hmm. and I want to maybe use like I don't know maybe Indian swear words. I don't know that yeah, I have not even heard. Right? Yeah. You know. So it's we're like, trying really hard to. Create. Actually, I would say that one more thing is like you guys growing up in the city. Yes. It's much more different than me coming from a. Back uh, like a yes. more rural place, yes, yes. you you mix more of uh, mix more and then hang out with people. Yes, yes. So yep, she's hiring. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, community acceptance slowly yes. is growing. Yes. So currently, your platform that you're working on, you have inter Instagram posts. Yes. Facebook. Yep. What else are you thinking of uh, doing? We are actually on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we uh-huh. have a web page. Okay. But nobody goes to our web page. I don't think so. Like, does a web page work anymore these days? I think uh, even Facebook itself, we realize that they like to keep their audience in Facebook. Inside, yes. Yeah. So as long as you put an outbound link, mm-hmm. uh, we realize that and reach really drops. Uh-huh. You know, it's almost they are they are quite jealous. You know, they don't right, want right, you to right. go out because you're know. using their platform of for course, everything. Of course. But our website is good for long form, so we are trying to go mm-hmm. into more long form articles. We're trying to uh-huh. review tag. We're trying a lot of things because if you're doing long form, did you like uh, study how long a person spends on a post? For sure, I think we are still testing how to write. We realize mm-hmm. attention span has it has been yes. shorter. I mean, if you look like people four are seconds, fish, three now, seconds. Like, oh, you know, so uh-huh. to keep people engaged, even with videos, the mm-hmm. drop off rate is crazy. Like we talk, if I get thirty seconds, uh-huh. that is fantastic. Uh-huh. People drop off at the ten second mark, the right. six second mark. You know, so that that's that struggle to to keep people there. You know, and with long form, there are no photos. Well, one thing I actually follow, uh, I research about is like the YouTube YouTube advertisements at the beginning of yes. a, a video. Sometimes I just three, I just wait for it to yes. say skip ad. Some would be nice enough yes. for me to watch the whole yes. thing. But how rare? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. So the struggle of keeping people mm. engaged is something that we struggle. We, we we constantly try to improve on. Uh-huh. What do we do so that? Because the punchline is coming, but you need uh-huh. to give it time. People right, right. Are like, wait no, for boy, it, boy, wait boy, boy, for boy. it, yeah. wait for it. So we have to. So we do things like our subtitles. If you uh-huh. realize, you read our subtitles. The subtitles nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so little things like that uh, are, are what we try to do to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. We have uh, what we call Easter eggs. Instead uh -huh. of using a real watch, uh -huh. we write, I'm late. On uh -huh. right? we, we use props that are ridiculous. Instead of a mic stand, we use, we use, a, use a mop stick. Okay. Right? So little things like that to get people to be engaged. Actually engaged. Yeah. So it, it's a struggle. You could probably do a video to just like 15 Easter eggs you missed on this week's MGAC. Yeah, the last recruitment video we did, we actually did uh, Easter eggs. So we asked to challenge uh -huh. people to look for the Easter eggs. We did I this see. Like, okay. Uh, um, KLC from, from our office view, you can see the KLC. Everything. Taipei 101. There's a beautiful there's there's flying. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we realize people get uh, bored. They want to move on. Uh, uh, so uh, right, right, we, right. We constantly try, but um, we tell people give chance, lah. Give chance. As a, as, a, as a psychologist, do you think we are losing our human side by too fast and too this, do that, urgency? For sure. I mean, this is based. I was a terrible psychologist. Uh, <laughs> That's by the way, I think uh, I wasn't really meant for that. Okay. But I, I felt like people these days. It, beyond just consuming media, even mm. in relationships, uh -huh. like you know, you have Tinder apps, you yeah. have dating apps. Everything is about speed. Everything is mm. about convenience. That some things you shouldn't do fast. Take yeah, your time. yeah. You know, we we lose that human touch of uh -huh. taking the time. And right. When right. you take time, like talking to someone, uh -huh. takes time rather than so. this person. Uh, face no, tabes. Tabes no. gone. You know. So you should actually so. try FCD in Tinder. It will crash. It will crash. Yeah. So the, the the point is, I think like when you we we get bombarded by so many right, things. Right, right, right. How many ads do you see in a day? You know, ah, you, too much. Too many. Everyone's selling you something. Coming here on LDP, the amount of billboards, yes. man. It's and these are just static, right? Imagine uh -huh. as you're scrolling through your timeline, you s you want to see what your friends are up to, but uh -huh. you're like, this person is selling a burger, this person is selling a car, this person is selling a service. So we we try to make content that's relatable. That's why you see. I think the reason why our videos do quite well is. Mm -hmm. There is that selling part, you know, okay. which is how we make money because we, we, we cannot do photosynthesis, right? Uh -huh. As talented as I am, <laughs> so I mean, uh, if we could just go stand out there, I don't <laughs> mind, man. Make all our food, know, right? So we, we try to create content that people want to watch to right, begin with, right, and uh -huh. then we work that marketing message inside. Uh -huh. you know, that's how I think it's it's the formula. Will will you like will MGAT come to a stage where like every week on certain days I wait for your release? It's like oh, wow. flash season three is coming that out, is something like that. I think what we are trying first is with a comic series. So mm -hmm. we actually have a guy um, in, in our office. Um, uh -huh. I think he's somewhere there. So Kenneth, hello. Kenneth, <laughs> so hi. Kenneth means uh, extra or something. Kenneth Lee. Uh, no, no, Kalefe is like, it's, it's not real. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, so okay, it's okay. a term for a substitute or an extra. Uh -huh. He's a great artist. Uh -huh. So we're going to do a comic series where you have recurring characters. Okay. Yeah, so we're testing that first. I hope to, you know, we, we look at other <coughs> content creators. They do a series, episode right, one, a web right, series, right, right? right? We really hope that with the increase in headcount and capacity mm -hmm. next year, we can try our very first and maybe even do a, like a feature film. Like, we, we don't That'd know. That'd be nice. Yeah, I mean, the world Get is... Get me in, man. Get me in. That's it, you're, you're gonna be like, Poo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, Probably so in the ISA for, as well. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I think we, we try to do great things. Uh -huh. We need the manpower, hence, therefore, hence, hence. I keep the Notice name. me, FCD. Who's that? Andrew So. Oh, hello, Andrew. Hi, I'm right. so <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, How sad it is that all of them are like. <laughs> It's just crazy man, the amount of stuff. Like should I talk to you? Should I look at my point here? Should I look at this? It's just it's nice, it's nice though. Vispire needs people to work for them. needs people like this. Your boyfriend just commented. Yay! Alright, coming back. You actually what is a creative company? Like I don't know when I was in preschool creative means drawing with your crayons. Now, the line. now what is yes beyond the line? I think wow, creativity is so difficult to to put in a box, right? Uh -huh. Like you might be creative, but uh -huh. I might not think so. Right? Uh -huh. Or someone might think that you're great. So some of the ideas that we come up with are uh -huh. there. There is no checklist, right? Okay. Uh, you found it. This this joke is hilarious, but I'm like, oh, it's all right. So I always believe that a creative company constantly changes. Mm -hmm. It learns from its mistake. It mm -hmm. looks beyond what uh -huh. people are doing. At the same time, it's also backed by data. You know, I think creativity okay. is a very fluff sort of right, thing, right? right, right. Oh, Intangible. Is, right. You, you cannot put a, put a quantity to it. You cannot mm -hmm. measure it. So mm -hmm. I think what we do is we look at other content creators, what they are doing, and we uh -huh. innovate. You know, I feel like creativity, as long as you keep growing, you you always be creative in that sense, right? At keep least that's growing. how I really define it. <coughs> yeah. 
that's quite deep though because you don't know what's next yeah we we, we don't know what's next but uh-huh. we know uh-huh. so we don't really reinvent the wheel not all the you time because uh-huh. some people are already much further than us uh-huh. so we look at them and we go like why are they doing great can we emulate this locally is it sometimes it's not applicable here of course of course you know certain things that they talk about uh-huh. western countries can accept but here uh-huh. maybe not uh-huh. right so we have to really tailor it uh-huh. and we push ourselves right sometimes if you look at it there are some days where uh-huh. ideation just gets stuck because we are humans as well right we, right, right, right. we get tired uh-huh. imagine creating content 365 days a year like i always tell the guys it doesn't matter if it's tong tong chang or christmas uh-huh. or content goes up content so content goes up imagine how taxing it is on, on your brain right right so like you do you get like brain drains or stuff For like sure. that i think i mean i'm lucky enough that i have a team now to support me uh-huh. but in the beginning and we only did 2g content when we first started but uh-huh. now because we have a team we create so much more okay uh the brain drain does happen that's mm. when we realize we're kind of sort like we're kind of gila and that's important to balance it out you know because when you have fun like even just talking to you mm-hmm. uh it will spark ideas right, right. then i will go back and i'll create something out of it actually like, most of my script is just from what you talk yeah i yeah i realized that <laughs> you sent me the questions and none of them no, <laughs> no, don't, don't worry don't worry <laughs> Ah, there's a myth. It's yeah. just like touch points. If yeah. you forget, if both of us like so fluid, right? And like, that, that's crazy. It's like you know? both of us like if you forget what we're supposed to yeah. talk, then I look back like yes, shit, I'm course. stuck. Of <laughs> so we always forward, but I always tell people like yeah. I think when we study, you know, in our education system, it's quite mm-hmm. fixed. Mm-hmm. A is A, B is B, and things like that. It doesn't I, really force you to think outside of the box. Like I, I read a Facebook post from a guy overseas. He sent his daughter for art classes. Mm-hmm. It was all abstract and like universe yes. and mind yes. stuff, those kind of things. So he came back to Malaysia. Kid wanted to learn art as yes. well. Yes. It was just a paddy field, a sun up there, uh, mountains, and two birds flying. He says like we are so far behind in yes. creativity. Yes, we really are, and we are. I think maybe it's partly fear. I mean, mm. beyond. I think Malaysians are great. I think they are very creative people. If you see they some of the comments, uh-huh. my God, they are they are funny. They are innovative. Right, right. You know, they are really pushing boundaries. And and they related to something that happened exactly, that day or exactly. something like that. So I think when you know from the education wise, mm. if we start them young, we tell mm. them that they are not say no rules. They uh-huh. they must be boundaries. If your right? kid paints the sky red, just let it be. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I think you shouldn't limit anyone uh-huh. in any way, and it starts when people are very. Because right you know why the mask sky is red. <laughs> 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 Maybe yeah, she was born to live exactly, in mask. Exactly. So I always tell the, the the guys like you're never wrong. You're, yes. you're sometimes you're inaccurate, mm. but mm. you're never really wrong. Uh-huh. You know, so definitely. Actually, scientific data of today. Can be proven wrong maybe in the next minute. Yes, of course. Of okay, course. so nature or nurture, creativity. Wow. Uh, Someone asked that as well. That's deep. What happened to high acidity or everything? <laughs> 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 um, I think a lot of. Sometimes I feel like certain jobs or certain uh-huh. aspirations mm-hmm. is a first world privilege. I, I don't know mm-hmm. if that makes sense. True. Imagine like your family is poor uh-huh. and all you think about every day is surviving. All you think about is putting food on the table. It's very difficult for you to decide you're whether to survive. Stuck in that cycle. Yeah, because your head is always down. So you, mm. you you just focus on what needs to be I done. I need to feed right? my family, need yeah, to put food. Yeah, you feed your family and things like that. So I think unfortunately some <coughs> jobs are beyond certain people's you know, expression. Right. Sadly, and that's a, really, right. is a real right. fact, right? Uh-huh. So nature plays a part. Mm. Nurturing as well. I think uh, some family, if your family is conservative, Mm-hmm. That doesn't really help because mm-hmm. you will feel oh you can be those tortured artists like oh, <laughs> I was being outside the lines right? right but if your family is always encouraging that those are the ones who become the rebels and yeah. make but make new stuff yeah rebels make art too right yeah. you know a lot of the mm-hmm. the best painters or the best content creators are uh-huh. because of they want to break out the circumstances so <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? did you breakfast today yeah then you get the creativity from mom or dad. <laughs> When you get creative, like personally, uh-huh. uh, so there is this misconception that surely to to work here we all live great lives. Like I'm always jumping off a plane on weekends or like flying off to an island. Shit. No, no <laughs> so no, no. I always tell people that your everyday life, mm-hmm. your breakfast with your parents or shopping mm-hmm. trip that mm-hmm. you took, look for the little <coughs> little things and talk about it. Subtle nuances. Yeah. There is you know the whole silver lining thing. Yes. It's the same thing that you find uh-huh. humor in every uh-huh. aspect, right? Mm-hmm. I can think about. 10 things commonly done during interviews as bullshit uh-huh, right uh-huh, uh-huh, and this is just because i talk to you right yes. and it's not because we're doing anything particularly exciting right <coughs> you know mm-hmm. so 
look at your everyday situation and you you know people say travel to find yourself mm. uh, I, I'm quite 50-50 like, on that jauh perjalanan, luas pemandangan <laughs> exactly, yes. there is value in that but uh-huh. look around you, creativity mm. is really mm. it's already there, you just have to look at it look at it properly rather uh, okay, like okay, this kind of this like he's about, asking about data So like data for me, what I think is like you collect profiles of people who come and what age they are, gender. Yep. I think you've already done that, right? Yes. So how would you make specific targeted ads for this fella, for this fella? Right. So I think it's very broad. Any of the 34 year olds, mm. um, it's something that you know there are people who speak English, there's people who speak Chinese, and uh-huh. so on. We actually don't do targeted ads. We don't mm. target our ads. It's very broad. It's mm. very mass. So it's important for us to uh, think about. Sometimes we do a pure Mandarin. Piece, mm-hmm. for example. At the same time, I want people to feel included, so I'll sub uh. in Malay or in English. Uh. So we use, uh, you know, Hoi Fu Tin Hong, I don't know if you know, there's Beyond song, it's very popular. No. Nope. So some Malays actually know the song. Okay. Yeah, although it is not in Malay. So, so like I K-pop re- or what? It's, it's just Mandarin. Mandarin, it's a classic right. song. So I realized that because we are Malaysians, mm-hmm. our experiences are quite shared. So there's no uh-huh. point to target. I mean, we only target if let's say we do certain ads, maybe for alcohol, uh, uh, actually just alcohol, because we don't actually do any other. We, we okay. don't really do s- uh, cigarettes or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we don't target ads. We always keep it, what oh. I say, mass, okay. like mass appeal. I would say, mm-hmm. yeah. <coughs> I think one one big question everyone out asks there is like, how do you feed yourself? Oh, right. How do we make money? Yeah. <laughs> You're like <laughs> since being a writer and yeah. all that, from that time no food to now also so like now, how yeah. do you eat your photosynthesis? <laughs> <laughs> so I I think that MGAG how the company uh-huh. makes money is really we work with brands. Uh-huh. Uh, we are content creators. Okay. So first, what you have to do is create content people want to watch. Uh-huh. Right, you get the eyeballs in. These okay. eyeballs are basically you guys. You guys mm-hmm. are watching right now. Your eyeballs, mm-hmm. and then brands want to sell something. Mm-hmm. Right, so they come to us and say, "Hey, we want to sell our burger." Uh, okay. You create content that people love. Can uh-huh. we sink it in? Mm-hmm. And the sweet spot is when brands realize knows what we do because we realize there's a style of what we do. We uh-huh. don't make TVCs. Yes. You know, we don't really make typical ads like the burger doesn't fall and then the sesame seeds uh-huh. from the place. Yeah, I know that's that the the wop going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, so Yours is probably the sambal falling on yourself. <laughs> yeah, or so, <laughs> Asian mom doing something with a burger mm. or something. So when brands understand what we do, uh-huh. we can definitely work that in. So that's how we. They get have to understand you. Exactly, you have to understand exactly. them. That's how we make money, right? Mm. So, uh, the it it's really I think this ability to sell something is very common. I mean, to think about it, all mm. burgers are the same. They're not really that boom, right? Some is spicier than another. Yeah. Some is Thai inspired, Japanese inspired, but mm-hmm. it is about pushing the boundary of always creating new right, things. So right. people feel like, wow, this is a burger ad I never knew. So let's say if I bring, let's uh, say my product, yes. what would be your first step to analyze me or your process? So first I ask you, how much money do you have? Bono <laughs> <laughs> I'm just starting up. Yeah, I'll show you the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, we have to eat. Okay. Uh, I mean that's really important. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing we always ask is um, how adventurous are you? How adventurous? Yeah, some brands skydive or good waterfall. Yeah, <laughs> and we work with brands both from super crazy to yeah. quite um, strict. You know, mm-hmm. because some people they you know, for example, it's a Japanese brand. They're mm-hmm. quite strict. They have guidelines. Uh, they're not based right, here, so right. certain things we cannot say, we cannot swear, or we cannot make like mm-hmm. lewd, you know, remarks or something. So we always ask, what do you, what is your marketing idea? Do you want to raise awareness of this burger, for uh, example? Do you want people to buy more of this burger that's been around for a long time? Mm-hmm. Then we start crafting the idea. Uh-huh. You know, we pitch these ideas to you, and mm-hmm. you can say, oh, this is fun. This is not. There's a bit of back and forth uh-huh. because the brands really. Um, They won't have a certain flavor without right, using right, that right, stuff, right, right? Right, right? And then when everything is done, there's like paperwork and everything. Mm-hmm. We start creating, we start shooting. Okay. Then you will stay. The so there are like probably shooting. a few times you go back to each of other. Of course, of course. And the the brands really have to tell us what they want, what do mm-hmm. they hope to achieve from it. Uh-huh. And then when the video goes up, we uh-huh. monitor it very uh-huh. much like what you're doing. We read the comments. Uh-huh. We what what are people's sentiments about your product? Do they like it? Do they go? Uh-huh. Do they say I love it but I can't find it? Uh-huh. So that's something that we feel better. Okay, as well. like okay, people okay. really love your burger, but they can't seem to buy it. It always runs out. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that is our way of showing brands that 
beyond creating viral content, mm. we also give you learnings, teachings, our data. We realize a lot of females wow. love this product, so these are all grounded. So you're data. also like a consultant for yeah, ads and all. Sure. It's not just hi, your video reached one million people. Ah, thank you very much. Pay me uh, next week. You know, it's more of what did we learn from it. I um, see. realize that people thought that your delivery service was quite poor. So then uh, the brands themselves can go like, oh, oh shit, yeah. I suck at delivery. Yeah, so then they can work on it. So you see how it becomes a rather than just a one-off thing, we become partners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we are we are very lucky to have friends that look at us as partners. Uh-huh, right, the uh-huh. work created a continuous so, project. Of course, of course. Okay, so so there's this question here, which your friend also says is quite interesting. <laughs> oh my friend, Ah, uh, what do you think about creative entrepreneurship? What do I think about creative entrepreneurship in a sense of? Can you elaborate? <laughs> okay, Nathan, please elaborate. We'll come back to your question. Do I know? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> How long does one full process usually take? Probably from one ad set? Uh. Uh, I think because the team is so small. Uh-huh. Everything is done in-house, by the way, from ideation to uh-huh. production. Uh-huh. We don't outsource anything. Okay. Uh, it's very fast. Uh-huh. Our fastest turnaround time, which please, like if any brands are watching right now, it uh-huh. is insane. Please don't do it. It's three days. So this. first day of hello hi I want to do this uh-huh. can you do this bam 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 done the paperwork and yeah. then the ideation we shoot on the second day we okay. send you the first cut on the second day uh-huh. and it goes out wow. on the third day we only do this for crazy yo the most desperate of of clients the, the closest of clients because we realize you know sometimes campaigns move very fast right, right, like right. telcos move very fast yeah. FMCG move like fast. ostrich is running on LDP you it yeah, has you to go out tonight react. so yeah. because the team is so small the beauty about it uh-huh. is I can say hey make this meme right now and the guy uh-huh. can okay I'll do this right. Now. Right. Imagine there was a there's no like hierarchy or anything. Uh-huh. It's more of hey, can I do this? If he can't do it, I will do it. You know, so news. I, I read about this ad like uh, in US they have the Super Bowl. It's uh, a yeah. uh, American Football yes. League. Yes. So for about four minutes or something, they lost connection with satellite TV or wow. something like that, or the game stopped for a while. Yeah. This company that didn't have an ad set that didn't have a slot yes. actually put it in. So they were ready to put an ad anytime, any day. Wow, that's amazing! Yeah. So, so you know something is like a uh, national day is coming up yes. or New Year is coming up, but your slots are all full. But you keep something ready. Yes, always. And mm. I think the team works lightning mm. speed. Uh, mm. When you remember when the PM announced yeah. holiday on uh-huh. Monday during the Sea Games, uh-huh. so I had my guy was sitting there. Uh-huh. The moment he announced it, yeah. the meme went up. And uh-huh. that mean, and you can see numbers do very well because yes. people are like, wow, the yeah. admin is God. Like mm. he knows the PM is going to announce duty on Monday. Uh-huh. You know, so that's the reaction time is very important. Yeah. Reaction time. So like something is happening at night, right? So your guy is on his a date or something like that. He yeah. got his like secret time. <laughs> How do you ask him like, hey, do something now? So that's when uh, we come down to you know this whole title thing. You're uh-huh. a content strat. Someone's mm. a country manager. Someone's mm. the business development manager. Yeah. We don't care, you know. It's more of hey, um, hey, can you do this? Hey, man, I can't. I'm on a date. Mm-hmm. I'm with my mom. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have internet. Everybody had pick up each other. Yes, like, yes, So yes. the team that you see is really tight because we always watch out for each other. Uh-huh. So it's never hey, I'm a country manager. Why should I do your work? It's more of let me help you out. What right. can I do for you? You small so, team, you help each yeah, other. Yeah. So would would you also know like uh, Adobe Illustrator or some, yeah. uh, some? So a lot of the things is I know a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. I think uh, being you know a leader. Rec- requires you to admit that actually you're not good at mm-hmm. anything. That's why I hired you, man. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's to admit that, hey, actually I'm not good at Illustrator uh-huh, or uh-huh. I'm not good at editing videos. Uh-huh. Can you teach me so that I can help you put subtitles in, for example. Okay, very basic. Yeah. I'm never going to be like, as good as my videographers. Sure. But I can do the very basic and so that when mm. it comes down to it, I can help them out. Right. right? right so right. this sharing of knowledge within the team is very important as well. Mm-hmm. You know? And we do a lot of cross-country sharing from the ASCAC side. Cross-country yeah, sharing. Because they are further ahead compared to uh-huh. us. You know, they are you know, older, they have more brands uh-huh. and they are um, more grounded in data as well because they have done it for a longer period of time. Right, right, right. They help us or support us in a way where... Like, would you like show an uh, audience here and ask them, okay, I have an audience base like this, what should I do for them? For sure. And uh-huh. then they will say, hey, we tried this new campaign style uh-huh. uh, and it worked for Singapore. Mm. You might want to replicate it here. So this back and forth is really important because uh, they are like our the beta testers, right? Uh-huh. They will if they see a pothole, they'll tell us to do the support hole in this road. So just uh-huh. be careful. <laughs> we're so lucky because okay. if not, we will fall into the same hole and uh-huh. that will lower slow our progress yeah. quite a bit. So yeah. 
they are the pilgrims, the ones who first ventured into the field. <laughs> yeah, so they, they really suffered for uh-huh. us first and then we are the lucky ones where they're like, you know okay. what guys, mm. don't do this, we have tried and it failed. Uh-huh. And yeah, that's why we could grow so fast, I, I would say that's one of Okay, the there's this question. Mm-hmm. How is MGAC different from YouTubers and influencers? Right, so when we first started, there were a lot of memes. You know? Right. That's what we do. We're, uh-huh. we're different from MGAC in the way that we create them ourselves. We don't mm-hmm. do this crowdsourcing. Crowdsource. But uh-huh. our main focus is Facebook. Right, uh-huh. a lot of our content goes up, and there's uh-huh. a mix. So you see, YouTubers they don't make memes, uh-huh. right? And they focus on very long form. Some of our videos are like ten seconds long, right, right. <laughs> ten uh-huh. seconds long. Uh-huh. Uh, there is appeal in video, uh, videos content. Uh-huh. Like a lot of brands are like, I want you to make a video, I want you to uh-huh. make a video. Um, I realized that we are not influencers, but we are in position of influence. You are actually, I think you are influencers yeah. if but brands are coming to you for exactly. help. Exactly, but we try to move this mm-hmm. uh, focus away from Absidy. So MGAC is not Absidy. MGAC is not Asian Mom. It's mm. not Uncle Siumai. MGAC is MGAC, and these characters just happen to be there. So say for example, but if you ask the viewers, it's not like that. Uh, there is that. <laughs> but, uh, we always tell people that we are not. We are, we are not here because we really like to be popular. Uh-huh. We realize uh, it just happened. The influencers maybe uh, influencers work very hard. You know, please don't get us wrong. It's uh-huh. just that I think it's really dependent on your face, uh-huh. right? They they advocate a product. Mm-hmm. For us, it's more of we do our thing. We interact with each other. In between, you put and then in there's products. a product inside. Uh-huh. So you see how there's different. I'm not saying this product is fantastic, I, right? I got a question. Let's, sure. let's say let's say I have some uh, someone is hardworkingly like promoting Coca Cola. Yeah. Then you find out Coca Cola is an asshole company. Yes. Do you drop the brand? Do you do like? Wow. Um. That's always this uh, issue where say this brand they screw up, which mm-hmm. happens, right? They they did something, then they made uh, a boo boo, and then we need to look at uh, company wise. We have principles. Some okay. things we won't do. Uh-huh. I always believe in we cannot lie to the audience. Uh-huh. If I eat a burger, I can't say, "Oh my god, this is the best thing right. I've ever eaten," because that's lying. In a week, you're gonna lose seventeen yeah, pounds. Yeah, exactly. I would say this burger has its appeal, uh-huh. and you decide for your own. We always uh-huh. throw the ball back into the audience court, mm-hmm. right? And if let's say the brand does something which is doesn't gel with our principles, uh-huh. we usually don't go ahead and, and do that. So certain brands we actually don't take pick up. You know, if let's say a Botox brand, for mm-hmm. example, we don't brands, use them. Yeah, but there is there is a market for Botox, yes. right? Uh, personally, on the brand perspective, uh-huh. we don't encourage Botox for these are for fourteen year old kids. These Shit, are not that's not right. Um, they say you should start young, right? So. It, we, we ask ourselves do we want to do nope, this no, right? yeah, even like when we work with alcohol brands the focus is not about the booze it's about the sports the relationship uh, the, the the lifestyle it's not about drinking till you know you are uh-huh. intoxicated so that's that very important so you, you have like a social consciousness among of course it's really important should we do that yeah and we have Rashid, which is our halal checker. Ah, uh, so yep, yep. Before we do anything, it's like, hey, shit, boleh tak? Then if you say clear, then we clear, you know? So you have a Rashid, there's also another super popular Rashid page going on. Oh, you know is that? it? Yeah. I actually didn't know that, yeah. yeah. But we always err on the side of careful because we don't want to piss anyone off. That's not right, right, right. right. So. But just in on the border is nice, right? I know some you, some of your videos you're like talking some profanities. Yeah, profanity. yeah, there is. <laughs> uh, ultimately, we are. Uh, we, 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 love, we love to have fun, yes. you know, and sadly sometimes Not uh, too much uh. Yeah, not, not too, too much uh-huh. So imagine there's a line, we put like one like small toe on it mm. And then we'll come back, you know right, right. We understand that we work with you friends You tickle the audience Yeah, we tickle the audience and, mm. But we don't, we're not all about swearing So uh-huh. we do, if we look at our content, there's a huge variety We uh-huh. do serious stuff at the same time, we also do the, uh-huh. the, uh, <laughs> the Fun <laughs> stuff <laughs> Okay, <laughs> if you were to parody MGAC, how will the video be? <laughs> I don't know, you're already a parody. <laughs> no, the parody anger, there will be a lot of um, Asian mm. mom, I suppose. Um, a lot of Asian mom. A lot of Asian mom, a lot of like, uh, there might be swearing, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, it's going to be very budget. Everything we do is budget. Budget, yes. Very budget. How style. much you got? <laughs> How yes. much you got, and uh-huh. and I re- we realize that people don't care that we don't costume change. We don't care that the uh, mic can be seen. People just care about the content. Don't have worry. You don't have to worry all that, right? <laughs> if you look at Power Rangers, they're wearing the same suit, same clothes every day. <laughs> So it's alright. When we first went into it, like for me personally, I wanted costume changes. Mm. And the first music video that we did, I told my videographer that uh-huh. every scene we must change clothes. And then I realized nobody no, noticed it. You know, people love the content for what it is. Yes, you know? yes. Like, the girls are interchangeable. If, if you're like advertising for a clothing company, then yes, you might yes, have to do that. Yes, but yes. So we, I think that's how it would be like. We will uh-huh. parody in that sense. Alright. 
any that lady didn't come back to us about creative entrepreneurship so just give a random a generic answer um, creative entrepreneurship so uh. um, I think there is value in it right everybody's mm. doing everybody use the word entrepreneur mm-hmm. quite freely these days everyone's entrepreneur you sell lemonade by yeah website, you, you sell your dropship agent you're an entrepreneur yeah exactly I, I think there is value in being your own boss but mm-hmm. Uh, creativity, like I was just you know mentioning earlier, it yeah. is really difficult to quantify. It is something that requires you. You can have training. Uh-huh. It's also still not something you can see physically. Yes. Right. So I would say that there is that struggle. There uh-huh. is the niche for it. I mean, there's a demand for it rather. Uh, but at the same time, you really need to constantly evolve. And once you stop, I feel when it comes to creativity, uh-huh. that's when I think the brand will never die. stop yeah. adapting sure. and. Doing the necessary changes, yeah. you know, you might get complacent. That's very normal. You know, oh, look, look at us now. We have four hundred thousand likes. I don't have to work so hard, but nah, man, <laughs> we work even harder now than when we first start. Someone, if someone comes in to buy you all up, what will you, what will you all do? Wow, we have to ask my boss first. <laughs> okay, boss is in it too. Like, oh. um, I think from a personal side because uh, media prima comes to acquire you. What do you do? Uh, the beauty of I get, I get yes. There is an identity, uh-huh. and we fight really hard to preserve the identity, mm-hmm. the style, for the way we talk, for the way we shoot. It's very what we call very M gang. M gang. Yeah, very M gang. <laughs> so I would hope that whatever uh-huh. happens to the company in the future, uh-huh. whether or not I'm still around, or mm-hmm. the, the batch of people that you see are still around, uh-huh. that there's always an identity. The identity might evolve, okay. but it will always be still very Malaysian, still very localized, very Malaysian. and very relevant and very real. I feel that's something that I we hold very strongly. That's very, very okay. Real. And uh, let's say you you want to expand to probably Indonesia, yeah. IGEC. Yeah. How will you start that process? Of so probably starting up a company then I think uh, when we when we will expand I feel like mm-hmm. that is part of it there is people asking we want Thai yeah. gang we want you know, Indonesia yeah, gang yeah, yeah. Uh, it's important to find locals find right? locals locals have to run it locals uh-huh. have to be you need to find someone who is passionate about creating content that's uh-huh. unique to the Filipinos or the right. Indonesians or the Thais uh-huh. and they're so different from us I mean, beyond language culture and True. what is funny to them like uh-huh. I don't think I could ever make a meme about Indonesians just because, you wouldn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't know what makes yeah. up. We might speak Mahasa. I mean, right. it's a bit similar. It's close enough. Yeah, so we will first, I think, find this local person. Uh-huh. Uh, someone who's very passionate, who will work uh-huh. insanely hard in order to get this up. Because to start is difficult, you know. To and, start. Uh, we, like from the Malaysia side and the Singapore side, will always support. Uh-huh. Right, from beyond monetary, like I told you, I think without the mental, mental support. Mental support. Uh, uh-huh. of, of, you know, the, the Emotional partners, support uh, as well. Yeah, to tell you, hey, you know, you might not see it. When you get two likes a day, three uh-huh. likes a day, it's very demoralizing, right? Uh-huh. But you still, you know, you, you put your head down, you focus, and these people, uh, I mean, the Singapore team constantly tell us, guys, right. you're doing a great job. And I don't think we'll be this, where we are today without them, really, genuinely. True. So don't get demotivated. I read this thing yesterday, Coke sold 12 bottles in their first year. Yes. So don't get demotivated. Yeah. It's tough, you know, people, yes. when we do these sort of interviews, they talk mm-hmm. about the success. Uh-huh. Wow, MGAT, wow, you know, yeah, but yeah, nobody yeah. wants to talk about the hardship and that is a very real fact. No one, actually, people don't even care, like, people want to talk to you, they're like, you're, oh, you're such a big person, you're so popular, they don't see your human side of yeah, it. Yeah, the human side is, uh, like, this whole week, uh, the team shot, like, till about 12 midnight, 1, mm-hmm. 2 a.m., mm-hmm. they eat dinner at 10.30 p.m., uh. they forget to eat lunch. Nobody sees it because it's not I in our right. behind the scenes. Uh-huh. You won't see it in the videos, but it's a lot of hard work. You know? Okay, I think one sensitive issue here: you have fans, you have uh, stalkers. <laughs> so, yes. So, yes. like, how do you handle all this? Um, that's why we, the whole real name thing. Uh-huh. I, I guess too late now. Too late. <laughs> but money. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll censor it. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, we appreciate that people mm. like our work. You uh-huh. know, we have had random strangers come up to us in the street and say, uh-huh. um, I was going through a really tough period of my life and uh-huh. watching your videos made me happy. That's something money can never buy. Uh-huh. Right? It's something that we realize, wow, we are doing a great thing. It is something beyond yes. your advertising. But you know, when people started writing in and asking really creepy questions, I mean, we have to protect ourselves as well. We have our family, uh-huh. we have our personal lives. Beyond MGAG, there is also this side of us that, you know, we are daughters, we are yeah. girlfriends, you know, we are we are employees, you know, mm. we are answerable to a lot of people. So uh-huh. we appreciate 
appreciate your love. We really, really do, and we, we really don't mind you taking photos with us. But mm. when it comes to a point where it becomes kind of creepy, mm. that's when we really have to be very careful because right, you know right. it's a safety thing. We we don't yeah. know what people will do. Maybe know? they don't mean no harm, yeah. but it just happens. Yeah, I mean you're so oh, I really want to meet her, and right, so, right, so that's right. why uh, moving forward, maybe if we are more off on offline, we mm. we do more on ground things. Then people be we realize we're actually very normal. We're very uh, human in in real life. We're very quiet. You have acquired some kind of like celebrity status already <laughs> in a short period of yes, time. Yes, uh, and it is just part of it. The, the main reason why we started acting in videos is uh, uh, there was no um, there were no talents. Right? Uh-huh. It was just us. Okay. And to hire someone, I had to pay them two hundred ringgit a day. Wow, it's that's a lot. lot. Work, right. So why don't is hey mm. why don't we just act in front of the video? Uh huh. Right? So that's how it came about. It's a uh, it's an accident. <laughs> it's not really like I'm not an actress. Someone actress. actually replied saying that we don't not not only we like your job, your work, but we also like you Aww, guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so we, we try to be very real. So uh, the characters are uh, um, a, a little bit of us inside. Uh-huh. So when we, people come to us, that we we really relate. We find my mom is just like Asian mom. Uh-huh. Those kind of comments really make all. Ah, uh, so you take yeah. a little bit bit of mom and then put it into Asian exactly, mom. Exactly. The lines uh, that we Asian mom would say, the lines that my mom would say, uh, or my, the Asian mom's character. Like how she can just find anything you're looking for. Yeah, the, every mom is like that, <laughs> you know. And I love that. I really want to make that about. Uh, it's not about Asian mom. It's about moms. Yes, so you see yes. that difference in. Influence. Have you tried the Tupperware thing where they? Oh, so the re- the inspiration <laughs> behind the Tupperware thing was just a week before I lost my mom's limited edition Tupperware. Uh-huh. I was so close to not being able to sit here and talk to you. To <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom, I lost the bottle. Then she's like, oh. Tupperware. Well, she's like, which one? I'm like the gold one, which is you have to buy like, like uh, three six thousand years of Tupperware, and you get to <laughs> give it. Uh, I I almost died, so that's why we made it. And she saw the video, and she was like, I should have dropped you at the offer date. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> You're no longer my child. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, sure. wow, actually, you know, we've been talking for almost an hour now. Wow, <laughs> like no more forty five minutes. We're just talking too much. Okay. Uh, there was one question. Will you go into mainstream media? Uh, in terms of like being on 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 telly, uh-huh. or, uh huh. Personally, I would say acting is really not my forte. Yeah, it's not my forte. Mm-hmm. It is not. I wouldn't say it's, it's not really my passion. Like uh-huh. I don't wake up and be like, yes, I'm gonna act in in something today. What do you like to do? Writing. Um, I think writing for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, content creating and content uh-huh. creating in in many many different. So it'll be more of a producer yeah, then. Yeah, per- perhaps. And I realize I'm better behind camera. Like uh-huh. I know what I want. I just can't act it out. We know? got we got something over here. <laughs> right. So I have to wear it now. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll wear it for the last segment. So, <laughs> okay. <hello. laughs> you just went into it, <laughs> into character. <Yeah. laughs> so, um, I think I probably wouldn't you know, go into mainstream media. Uh-huh. I think that's not really a personal aspiration. Uh-huh. In terms of the other team members, uh, we realize that as people come to work, mm-hmm. they they might have signed up for. This job scope, but they found out something yeah, about totally themselves, different. and yeah. they go like, "Wow, maybe I should pursue this in the future." And mm-hmm. and for sure, but for now, I think in the near future, uh-huh. we're gonna be doing MGAC for a little while because there right. is so much more to be explored. Yes, explore. yes. Yeah, yes. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, I think we have uh, we talk too much. <laughs> uh, what kind of people MGAC wanna? Yeah, I think she talked about it. Crazy yes. people. Crazy people. Yeah, yeah. And willing to try new stuff. Willing to try new things. You know, don't take yourself too seriously. Okay. All right. So I think about that. Sure. Is there any like parting words? Like, mm. um, I guess a take-home lessons is something that you know I I really want to like cover in a sense that yeah. uh, personally my passion project is to talk to students like people who are just uh-huh. studying, I'm still studying, don't even mm-hmm. know what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, my career did not start here. It did not start at at, at Apex. It, it was more uh-huh. of there was a lot of uh, trials. Right. Uh-huh. I did a lot, lot of things. I think if I could redo this, if I could turn back time and do it all over mm-hmm. again, the first thing I would do right fresh out of uni is I would have taken the time to ask myself, what do I really love? Yeah. Like, people don't give kids or students I, that time. Even at 17 years old, I don't think you're supposed to make a life decision yeah. like, what am I going to study? What am I exactly, going to become? Exactly. And allow yourself to, um, to try, mm-hmm. right? And Passion is great. Everybody yes. talks about passion. So I'm not, I'm not here to tell you go for your passion. I, I really don't really believe uh-huh. in passion so much. I believe find your passion uh-huh. and then find a job that allows you to do a part of that passion. A part right? of so that passion. I love writing, uh-huh. but writing is creating content. Right. I right, am right. MGET allows me to create content. Uh-huh. So but MGET also pays the bills. So that is yes. that sweet like little gap in uh-huh. the middle. So 
if you're just starting out or if you're still in uni and you're still asking yourself what what do I want to do? How come I don't have all the answers? Uh-huh. Take the time. I think that changes everything because there are some jobs I probably would have taken in hindsight, you know, because yes. you wasted, you wasted time. time. Actually, wasted same time same thing happened. Yeah, yeah. So take the time. I think One more thing will be like getting like uh, internships related to what they like yep. and probably uh, freelance. Yeah, freelance. And I, my younger brother, he's graduating uni. He's mm. looking for internships and a uh-huh. real job. And uh-huh. He he keeps focusing on the big names. Oh, I want to work ah. in the big four. Big I four. Work in the the big that. companies. To me, I think if you really want to learn what it's like to be an entrepreneur, if you want uh-huh. to work in a startup, pick smaller companies because mm-hmm. you get hands on. You right. get the hands. Uh, you got to do everything. You got to do everything, and then you ask yourself, "Do I really want this?" Because you have this fluff sort right. of dream that this is great, but actually sweep your face, wash the toilet, everything. everything. Yeah, but try first, and right, try don't focus first. so much on the brand names. In fact, find a job or find a company that allows you to to really see the entire process from start to finish, mm-hmm. and then you can decide whether or not you want this. But if they're not interested in entrepreneurship, then it's fine, totally fine. Um, I think also whether you want to be an accountant or a banker, mm. a lot of people that I speak, speak to in our you know, age uh-huh. group 25 and above in their uh-huh. first jobs, or, or not their first jobs, rather their current job, mm-hmm. they say, my job pays the bills, but I really right. hate it. Uh, and that is so sad, you know, you work, what, 50 odd hours, maybe 70 odd hours a day, uh-huh. a week rather, a week. Um, mm. and you hate it. <laughs> so uh-huh. how, how sad, if you get hit by a bus, uh-huh. You'll be very unhappy. I always of ask course. myself, like uh-huh. you know, right now if I go out and get hit by a bus, will I be unhappy? I don't think I'll be unhappy because I think I've achieved quite a few things, mm. and I I really really love my job, and I think right. the people in the company loves our jobs, uh-huh. our jobs as well. So okay. find something that makes you happy. You know, as cliche as that sounds, it's important. Uh, last question: How many people in your team right now? Yep. So uh, there are only six, including myself. Uh-huh. Uh, it's very lean. We are going to be doubling in headcount next year. That's why the hiring process mm-hmm. is really uh, ongoing. But the team is very, very small. So everybody you see so, is everybody. So whatever you see on MGAG is done by a team of six people. Yes. From start to finish. All right. <laughs> All right lastly, I love you from I love you at City. <laughs> Salam sayang dari Sarawak. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think any anything else? No, but I I just want to thank like people who are watching right now uh-huh. or even fans that have been following us when we were nothing to what we are today. Uh-huh. We are really nothing without you, and it's it's true. Wow. And we only hope that we continue to create content that you love, uh-huh. uh, that feeds us, uh-huh. and at the same time that we love <laughs> to do. Feeds us. So that's really important. But thank yeah. you so much. So All right. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's all for today. We'll be announcing our next episode soon online on our Facebook page. So like and share this video as well as like our page, Vspire Lab. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Wow. <laughs> <FC>. <laughs> Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah.